Some of you might not know the story, but it was two years of praying and persistence. And praying and persistence. And I tried because I believe do what you can and God will do the rest. And I did what I could. And I prayed. And every time I hit a brick wall, I prayed some more. And I said, God, I don't know why. I don't know why these things keep falling apart. But I know that you're still at work. And I know that you turn all things for the good to those who believe. And I choose to put my faith in you. And I trust that God, you will do something. Because I'm expecting a miracle in this young man's life. I'm expecting a testimony. And you are God. God who hears and you are God who answers so I put a demand on God's ability and we stood in faith and we prayed and God made a way because that's the God that we serve yes amen, amen. so we go to Pretoria and we're there and, we, and and everything how we got there was a miracle let me tell you because we were looking at more than it was going to be just under a million rand to do treasure surgery now when you tell people a million rand, they go, shoo, oh. But you see, the favor of God will give you the things that money can't buy. Yes. Because that's the God that we serve. He opens doors. Because he says, I am a God who goes before you. And I prepare the way. Do not look to the left. Do not look to the right. But look at me. Keep your eyes fixed on me. And I will show you great and mighty exploits. Because I, the Bible says, God says, these things and greater I will show you. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So we didn't know how we were going to get to Pretoria. Well, let me let me tell you a story. We didn't know where the money was going to come from, but I knew God would make the way. Yes. And that door closed. And then we were going to try in America. And then that door closed. And then after praying by the grace of God and obedience to what someone else said, go and record a video. God opened the door because some man that Trevor sent a, a video to saw it and he was moved by the compassion of God in his heart. And he said, I want to be a part of this. But he himself said, I don't know how we're going to get it done. And I said, let's have faith. God provides. And we prayed. And every door opened in Jesus' name. And even the doctor came and said to me, he said, brother, in my whole life of being a surgeon, these guys have never said yes. And they said yes, and I can't understand it. Because this is not a small thing. This is a big thing. But you know what? We serve a big God. And to our big God, our big things are small to Him. Like a speck of dust. Not even a drop in the ocean. Because the Bible says that He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen? That's the God that we serve. Yeah, but you know, the reality is this. You, you don't have the money to pay. I don't need to have the money to pay. I have a God who hears and answers. I have a God whose name is Jehovah Jireh. I have a God who said his name is El Shaddai. I have a God who said his name is Jehovah Shalom. I have a God who has promised to me and to the generation after me. And the generation after that. Up to a thousand generations. That my generation and in me and in the seed of Abraham through Christ. We are blessed. And we have access because we are child, children of His kingdom. That is the God we serve. So we didn't know how we were going to get to Joburg. And then a brother from church said, Brother, don't worry. I'll drive you up. I'll make a trip especially for you guys. And then his car broke down. And everyone would say, Oh, the devil, you know. How oh, the devil did this, the devil did that. No, no, no. God had something far better because we flew. You see? Sometimes we see a door closed and we blame the devil. When God is closing you the door, closing the door and say, Hey, you don't serve a God who's poor. Why are you putting your faith in a lift or a taxi when I can give you a car or an airplane? Where is your faith? You see, it's easy to trust God for the little things because you know in your mind it will probably happen. But when it's something big, then you really have to step out there on the water. And you know that if God doesn't come through, you're going to sink. Amen. But that's where our faith needs to be. Because the Bible says we don't walk by sight. But we walk by faith. And the just shall live by faith. So, we get a ticket. We're going to fly up to, to Pretoria. Now this is the day before we need to go. Or two days before we need to go. Sorry, a day before. We don't have any accommodation sorted out. We don't have any money for food. Now we're going to be there for at least 15 days. So we pray. And the hospital says, don't worry. You can come and stay here by us for free. Yeah. 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 
family, you need to understand. 70,000 rand for five days in the hospital and we stayed for almost, how much? A month and a half. Yeah. 70,000 rand for five days only in hospital. And we stayed by the grace of God for almost two months. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you know what? I, I, I thought to myself, well, we don't have money to, for food. But we prayed. And then something said to me, go and see these people. And when we went there, the lady said, don't worry about food. It's taken care of. Breakfast, lunch, and supper. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But not only that, you see, we are king's kids. We are children of the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors of Christ. So not only did we eat hospital food, we were given the doctor's menu. Whatever you want, T-bone steak, pork chops, steak, egg chips, whatever you want, you order. Oh. <laughs> And Trevor loved the pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> and T-bone steak and chips. <laughs> and pine chips, eh, Menzi? <laughs> Hallelujah. But we serve a God who provides. There's so many testimonies. The day we got to the hospital, there was an uneasiness in my spirit. I felt that there was something that God had planned for me. You can ask Trevor, you can testify. And then... And I said, Trevor, I can't, I can't sit still. I've got to, let me go to the chapel. And I went to the chapel and we prayed. And then, then I still had this uneasiness. And I knew there was something. Because I had this fire that was beginning to burn on the inside of me. And I knew, God, you had a plan for me to be here. I'm not here for Trevor. You've allowed this to happen for something far greater. So I walked down. And as I walked down, I hear, there's a young girl dying in ICU. And there's a young boy dying in ICU. And, this, and I thought, God, you open the door. You prepare a way. Give me somehow. Show me some way that I can, I can speak. That I can speak to death. And there must be life. Give me some way, Father. Open that door. So God brought me there to pray for people that were dying. That were on death's door. And, and my faith was, I knew that, Lord, it's not me. But it's you that's in me. Because greater is in me, is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And if, if light comes in, who is life, death must go. Because wherever life goes, there can be no death. And you are the life-giving God. So I pray. And a young man who was after 23 days in a coma, where doctors said there's no hope. I spoke to his mother. She said, there's no hope now. It's... I saw her reading the Bible. I said, that's the best place you can be. Yes. He is the God who hears and answers. Yes. He is the God that can change your death to life. He is the God that can change your life. Amen. Life of eternal death to eternal life. Amen. So I said, can I pray? Let's pray. So we prayed. And the next day I saw her. She said, my son is waking up. But every time he wakes up, he goes into a, a, a seizure. And they put him back in a coma. So I said, I command those seizures to cease in Jesus' name. I speak now. I speak now. Hallelujah. By day 27 of being in a coma, he was sitting up. He was eating food. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So every day when Trevor was in, in high care, and then I'd come out to visit from visiting Trevor, I would bump into people that were coming to see people that were on death's door. Oh. Did you know what? I said, I bind the strong man of death in Jesus' name. I speak life in this hospital in the name of Jesus. You shall live and not die. Hallelujah. And I took authority of strongholds and principalities and powers and darkness. And I commanded life. And life came. Because the people that were on death's door that walked. That walked out of there. There was a sister by the name of Lynette. And her husband was beside himself. He said, I don't understand. She loves God. She serves God. You must see her. When she goes outside, animals come to her. She's like the superwoman. But now she's lying there. But there's no life in her. Her eyes, there's no focus. She can't do nothing for herself. I said, my brother, Jesus can do something for her. 
Let's pray. Let's believe. Let's trust God. Two days later, she was alive. She was blinking. She was starting to eat. And she walked out there. So why were we there? Why did God allow this to happen? Because there were people whose lives needed to be yes. yes. That's why. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's not all. You can ask Nkaniso. How many lives were touched by the testimony of, of Trevor's testimony? There was a young man. His name was Justice. And he fell two stories down and into a quarry. And, and the doctor said that the, the, the spine was severed. The spinal cord was severed. Yeah. He had no movement. You can ask Trevor. He could move like this. He was drinking through a straw and they had to feed him like a baby with a spoon. And I said to Trevor, I said, Trevor, I have to pray for this man. We need to pray. God wants to do a miracle. And I could feel the fire again burning inside of me. And I went and I prayed. And when I prayed, it was like, oh, lightning. His whole body shook. You can ask Trevor. And I said, God, I hope I didn't hurt this man. I hope I didn't hurt him. But moving, you know what? Yes. When I came back the next visiting hour, he was using his arms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. When I went back to Pretoria after coming back to Durban, I said, what happened to justice? The guy said, brother, he walked out of here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. That's the God that we serve. testimonies brother this young man flew up I needed to come back to Durban we didn't have money to pay his ticket we were thinking how are we going to do it we shared testimony a man overheard the testimony and his life was touched he said oh, I want to be part of the story I didn't ask him for money I didn't say you know brother uh, give us money and we can do things we shared the story and God touched his heart. And then he found me and said, what can I do? And I said, well, we're trying to get Menzies to fly up from Durban here so that I can fly back. And I was ready. I did what I could. Contacted SAA and tried to arrange sponsorship. And they said no. And it was God's grace because half an hour after they said no, he said, I'll pay his way. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. And even when we were in hospital, and we were lying there in the ward. There came another man who was far from God. He shared. He began to confess. His wife goes to church. His children go to church. But his life is not so close to God anymore. He's a social guy. He's got money. He's got cars. He's got houses. He's got everything so he doesn't need Jesus. And he came in for an operation on his foot. And I had a prophecy for him. I said, my brother, this day, you are not here by coincidence. It's a divine appointment because God wants you to know that just like your natural walk is going to change, so too will your spiritual walk change. And you will be like this with God. And you shall know that He is the God that is with you. The man was so touched. He, he, he sends me messages every day. His life has changed. So much so, he said, brother, I will pay for your ticket to fly back for you and Trevor. You see, that's the God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. So while we're serving God, God is making all things come together for the good to those that believe. Amen. Amen. There are many testimonies. Many, 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 many testimonies. You must ask Trevor to share of what God did only, not only in Trevor's life, but in the lives of people in that hospital. Through Trevor. Through what God had done in Trevor's life, Trevor has been able to minister to other people. There was a man that came there, and when he came in, I just sensed the spirit of suicide. I didn't say a word because God told me to keep quiet, but Trevor witnessed to him, and he broke down in tears. You see, God did a miracle and God used something that everybody else said was a curse and he turned it for a blessing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'll tell you now, 
when Trevor, when the morphine wore off, and he was normal again, because he wasn't normal for a while after the surgery, <laughs> I would visit him and then go away and come back again. He'd say, oh, my brother, where you been? But I was just there. But anyways. <laughs> I'll never forget these words. He woke up one morning and he said, I am a new man from the inside and my soul is healing every day. And every day I'm a new person. For me, that's all I ever needed to hear. It made everything I did worthwhile. Because there's one man confessing, today I'm a new man. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I shared this as well. This community will never be the same as well. Because you've seen God at work. You've seen what God can do. You've seen what God can do. And God is showing you all in this community a lesson. His work in your life is not determined by how much money you have. There's testimony. This testimony. His work in your life is not determined by who you are. It's determined by whose you are. And you are His. And you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to be, to be used, to be part of Trevor's story. And I thank God for that honor and that privilege to be able to serve. Amen? Amen? Thank you. Friend, while I'm here today, if you need prayer, I'd like to pray for you. If there's something in your life and you don't know how it's going to change or what can change it, I want to pray for you because prayer changes things. And God hears and God honors prayer and God changes things. So, while I'm here, I want to take the liberty if the pastor doesn't mind. And I want to pray for this young man as well. And there are many others that are here who want prayer. I want you to come up and pray. But if you are here, if you're a child of God, if you're blood washed, and you're spirit filled, I don't want you to just be a spectator, be a participant. Come and pray as well. Submit your life to God. And He will do great and mighty things. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.